A portion of this video is sponsored by World of Warships, but more on that later. The Bamboo P1P. This thing is trash. I can't get a good successful print off of it. The cruddy cheap touchscreen keeps freezing. The firmware is buggy. I do not understand the hype on this dang printer is what I used to think. And now it's one of the best 3D printers I've ever used. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank and today we're going to be discussing the new Bamboo P1P. If you haven't heard of the P1P, I don't know what rock you've been under, but it is turned into one of the absolute best 3D printers I have ever used. But first, I want to talk about that intro. Why did I hate this printer so much in the beginning? You guys might have even seen me posting about it on Instagram or even some of the Facebook groups. Careful doing that. But I hated this printer. It wasn't working. There was something wrong with the firmware where the screen was just freezing. Every time I printed something, I'd have to turn the printer off and turn it back on. The touchscreen would still freeze half the time. The 3MF files weren't exporting properly. It just wasn't working and I did not understand the hype on this printer. I had all but given up on this printer. It was sitting on the shelf. I was barely able to get the stock prints off of it. And after emailing Bamboo back and forth a little bit, they finally released a new firmware update that fixed everything. Now the only failed prints I'm getting are really just my fault from slicing errors and issues. But I wanna talk about my entire experience with this printer, the features and quality it's been putting out, and why it's now the printer I recommend to pretty much anybody who can afford it. It does have a pretty hefty price tag on it. But first, let's clear off this table and just talk about the printer. Wouldn't it be funny if I just cut right Actually, before we get too much into it, a weird thing did happen with the P1P. Um, I sent a file to it and I just don't remember why. Actually, let's, let's go take a look. Yeah, I don't remember why I sent this to the printer. It was something important. Hmm. Oh yeah, today's sponsor, World of Warships. Will you stop? I'm telling them, wow. World of Warships is a massive free-to-play game and it's available for PC right now. I myself am really fond of strategic style games like this. Featuring more than 500 ships across 10 different nations, in-game weather, and ever-evolving game tactics. New content is released every month, whether it's new ships, cosmetics, or even new ship classes. You can always count on enjoying fresh gameplay experiences with best-in-class graphics. Featuring multiple ship classes that conquer the oceans your way. From big hitting battleships, quick and devastating destroyers, and do-it-all cruisers, to sneaky submarines, and if the skies call your name, even aircraft carriers. This game has so many different features and details, we could literally be sitting here all day talking about it. Historically accurate ships, 40 plus maps, 20 different ports, naval commanders, rotating battle types, and a really awesome online community. Oh yeah, World of Warships is also available on consoles. Pretty neat. When you sign up, use the code WARSHIP to get exclusive rewards. Doubloons, credits, premium account time, and a ship. Who doesn't like free stuff? Plus, this month only, you can go into battle with Popeye the Sailor or Bluto as your commander, with Popeye-themed flags, patches, containers, and even a ship skin. So go check out the game, use code WARSHIPS when you sign up, and get into battle. Maybe this guy will stop nagging me. Oh, are you okay? So obviously, I have gone and modified the printer just a little bit. This isn't how you get it out of box. This is a Companion Cube STL file. I printed it in fun Iron Man colors because, haha, <laughs> look, Iron Man. But I will link this down below because it's a really cool little additional mod for the printer. Also, at the time of receiving it, I actually had to be the one to install this cool little light bar here and the camera. I've been told that they now come pre-installed, which would have been pretty cool and nice, but you get a camera and you get a light bar. The camera isn't the best quality, but it still lets you monitor the prints from the mobile app or your computer. Speaking of which, yes, there is a mobile app, a very reliable mobile app that I have actually had pretty good luck with. Um, I can watch the prints, I can start the printer, I can do a lot from uh, the phone or again, Bamboo Studio on the computer. So that was a really great piece of connectivity that a lot of other printers lack and really need to catch up on. Now I will say Wi-Fi is a little spotty. I don't know if it's particularly my own Wi-Fi network, but um, uh, across different Facebook groups and talking to friends, apparently the P1P does have some Wi-Fi connectivity issues. Hopefully they can sort that out eventually, but when it does work, it works great. The P1P also comes with a cavalcade of extras and little bits, tons of extra screws, um, a whole extra hot end, a bunch of extra little tools and stuff to just make the whole experience easier. It's nice to see this. Um, it'd be nice if there was a little bit of a better organization for it. This is a completely separate box than this came out of. Uh, it would be nice. I'm sure there's something to print like a, a tool storage system to hold all of these extra parts, but for now they just kind of live in a box off to the side. 
And the printer comes with some stock prints to test out. Look at all this stuff. We got benchies, we got puzzles, we got this weird scraper thingy. I have no idea what this does, whatever. Now, obviously these parts are pre-sliced from bamboo. I had nothing to do with the slicer settings on these. So typically they're gonna come out probably better than most. They wanna put their best foot forward, especially when you're you know, testing your little stock files. And it's honestly kind of hard to mess up a little um, hexagon organizer. But guys, if I'm being honest, I don't care about the maximum capabilities of this printer. I don't care about all the crazy varieties of filaments you can print on the P1P or the X1. Oh, have you tried adjusting this, modifying this, increasing this? I don't care about any of that. The one main thing I have cared about with this printer is the fact that I was able to take it out of the box, put it on a shelf, and hit print after the firmware was fixed. And if I was to go and buy a new one, the firmware would be updated. So that would just kind of work out of box, but you get the point. This printer now works near flawlessly out of box. And I know the $700 price tag is a little off-putting, especially for a printer this size. No, it's not as big as my CR10 Max or the Elgin Neptune 3 Plus, but it's reliable and fast. Quick story time. I was making a Red Hood costume to go to a Comic-Con and it was two days before the actual con and I realized, oh, I have the whole costume done, but I don't have any weapons or props to go along with it. I wanted to make these two little prop guns for the costume. Now, these are some free files off of Thingiverse and once I downloaded them and got them in two pieces each, they were bisected right down the center like that. I wanted to print these as fast as possible at the best possible quality. I laid all the four parts on different printers. I think I was using my CR-10S Pro V2 and maybe an Elgu Neptune something. And at a maximum quality, each of the four parts was still gonna take anywhere from 15 to 20 hours. And I've seen the quality I get out of those printers. It is very, very impressive. But I took the same files, all four files, put them on the P1P and each one took a little over four hours. It was quicker for me to print all four pieces of these prop guns in an insane quality on this P1P than it was to spread them across four other printers. And I didn't really adjust settings. I probably could have gotten these to print even quicker. I turned on ironing and the quality of these was beautiful. I really didn't even sand these. I took them right off the build plate, glued them together, scuffed them up a little bit and painted them. And uh, I had my props done. Something like this would have been unheard of a few years ago. This is just ridiculous. Especially considering the fact that I didn't have to adjust anything. I didn't do anything to the printer. I didn't upgrade it. I didn't maximize it. I didn't go through temp towers and calibrations and recalibrations and PID tunes. It just worked out of box. But you guys are here watching my videos and I don't print small stuff. I make cosplay and props and this thing can fit full size helmets. Now, obviously Iron Man helmets like this come in multiple pieces, so you don't really need to print the entire thing in one shot. It can, most printers can fit an Iron Man helmet, even things like the Ender 3. But if you guys saw my recent Mandalorian build video, this entire helmet was printed on the P1P. Though I had to scale it down a little bit and do a little bit of adjusting, this thing still fit on the build plate and it fits my head. Now, I'm not gonna be able to go and one-shot a gigantic Green Goblin helmet on this thing. Obviously, it does have its limitations, but the fact that I can fit a pretty average-sized full helmet on this printer, that's pretty awesome. And I was able to print this helmet in, I wanna say, 20 to 22 hours. And again, I really wasn't trying to push this printer to the maximum. I know my friend Nick was able to print a Mandalorian helmet in like 15 or 16 hours on his. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I procrastinate. Even sponsored brand deals, sometimes life gets in the way and you end up hitting the end of deadlines and you're like, oh man, I need to get this thing done. This isn't a sponsored post. This is me talking about a different sponsored post video, but I was fortunate enough to get sponsored by Apex Legends for a TikTok video, and they wanted me to build this gun. This is something called the Whistler Pistol, and I had a buddy model it up for me, but I needed to print it fast. It was split into a bunch of different parts. He optimized it for printing. I loaded up all the parts on my P1P, and I printed this entire prop gun in 12 hours, and everything fit together perfectly. Now, yeah, if you look, you can absolutely see layer lines on this prop. But from a distance, the fact that I was able to pull this off the printer and just hit it with green and gunmetal spray paint, that sells pretty well. Here's a better look at the Red Hood pistols. Pretty much the same thing. Listen, I know this feels like a sponsored ad and Bamboo did send me this printer to test out, but you know what they didn't ask me for? A review video. In the initial emails, they had only asked me for my feedback. Test out the P1P, let them know if I have any issues and just talk to them about it. I'm making this video because I want to. 
This isn't a cheap starter printer, but it is probably the best starter printer you could get your hands on if you have the budget. Do I have failed prints on it? Yes. Are things going to start to wear down over time? Of course. It's a machine that has moving parts. Things are always going to wear down. But the fact that you can just unbox this, plug it in, turn it on, and start getting some of the best quality I've ever seen out of a 3D printer fast, this is just driving the whole market even farther. And a lot of other 3D printing companies are starting to worry about it. I'm actually currently testing the Creality K1 in the other room, and I'll tell you what, Bamboo doesn't really have much to worry about, but there's a video on that coming out later. It'll be the P1P versus the K1. Stay tuned for that. I want more of these. I'm probably going to be getting more P1Ps, and I just cannot wait for them to make a bigger volume printer. If they just make a 300 cubed printer, an actual helmet size printer that can print some larger pieces of armor and cosplay, it's game over. My entire garage is going to be filled with them. Like I said, I'm not going to get into all the technical things this printer could do. You can Google that and see it. I am using this thing for one purpose, to pump out props as quickly and efficiently as possible. And it's meeting my requirements. So if that's what you're in the market for, this thing's going to deliver. The only thing I do need to say is it is loud. High speed printers are kind of going backwards from where we got with silent printers. A lot of the new Elegoos and Creality's, they're very quiet and silent because that's what people have been asking for. But when it comes to high speed printers, Printing, you need a lot of cooling fans on this thing. It's a Core XY, it's moving very fast, it's cooling very fast, so it's going to be loud. I wouldn't have this in your bedroom, you're not going to be able to sleep next to it. Listen guys, I made this video because I want to share with you what's currently on the market and what printers I like and don't like. And you guys have been seeing me use this and it's a very popular printer right now. And I know some of you have been waiting for my opinion on this, especially back in the beginning when I absolutely hated it. But the firmware fixed it, I haven't had problems with it since, and I like it. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in this video, drop some comments down below. I read all of them and I do my best to respond to as many as possible. If I could surmise the entire video and the entire point to all of this is the bamboo P1P and the X1 Carbon from what I've been seeing and my friends using it has made 3D printing fun again. I don't have to fuss with the printers. I don't have to mess with them. If I want something printed, I just get it. And though Bamboo's customer service still needs a lot of work, hopefully one day they get there, this is absolutely driving and changing the market. I am so excited to see what the next five years produces because this is ridiculous. And uh, hopefully the future just benefits us all. I can't wait. But that's gonna be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.